<laughs> hey guys, and welcome to Fishing in the Midwest. If you clicked on my last video, which was 100 subscribers, you're probably a pretty big ice fishing fanatic, kind of like me. Well, today I'm going to show you some really great ice fishing uh, tips and tricks and uh, how to organize your tackle, so stay tuned and keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome back. The first thing I want to talk about is how to organize your ice fishing tackle box. When it comes to ice fishing, a lot of your uh, tackle is downsized. Your hooks are downsized, your rods are downsized, and pretty much everything just becomes smaller, mostly because the fish are more subtle, you're in a hole that's about yay big, and you're fishing with a small rod, you can't have something too big. So, when I find that when your equipment downsizes, you need a downsized tackle box, which I've got right here. This tackle box is a spinnerbait tackle box, where you just pretty much put your spinnerbaits, your um, crankbaits, and all kind of stuff in it, and I've made it into a nice fishing tackle box, and this is really easy, simple to do. Um, if you got something like this rectangle and it's really deep, as you can see, this thing is, is probably about uh, four inches deep. Really nice tackle box. So I'm going to show you what I keep inside here. Uh, I'm going to try not to take everything out, though. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, right here, I've got my uh, knife and my pliers, just in case I've got a fish that swallowed the hook. And especially when you're ice fishing, you do not want to get your hands wet, especially if it's around 19, 20 degrees, in which it was a couple uh, couple days ago when we were ice fishing. So you want to try to get your hands uh, away from the ice and the water uh, when it's really cold out. You'll just be miserable out there. Next thing I've got here is another tackle box. And in here I just keep all my weights and uh, tackle. Really cool stuff. I've got my feather jigs in here. I've got my uh, blue eel jigs. I've got my crappie and bass jigs. A lot of spoons and little tiny spinner baits, some weights, and some uh, just live bait hooks. Um, this is pretty much necessary when you do when you go ice fishing. Um, you always need some kind of small jigs. You need a larger variety of jigs, hooks, weights, especially if you're fishing in deep areas. Um, sometimes you have you have too much weight that uh, bugs the fish, and they find that when they uh, try to hit the lure, they feel the weight and they'll just be afraid of it and not even take the hook in. So that's why I like to use some uh, drop shot, uh, 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 excuse me, weights, and uh, it just makes a fish feel like there's no weight on there, and you'll definitely catch fish. So I always keep a couple of those in my tackle box. And again, I've got a couple of attractants in here. One of my favorite attractants that I use in the summertime, and hopefully have luck this winter, is just a Berkeley Gulp, uh, just the natural little grubs. This thing looks like little maggots, but they're really slimy looking, almost like worms. And um, they, there's probably, I'd say, around maybe, oh geez, I'd say 50, 50 of them in here. Uh, they're called maggots, just little maggots, uh, made by Berkeley Gulp. Really great stuff. Um, again, I, I, got, I got a bunch of other Berkeley stuff. I've got some Berkeley worms in here, some crappie nibbles made by Berkeley. Uh, crappie nibbles are great for bluegill, though I've never caught a crappie on them. Uh, so they should change the name from uh, bluegill nibbles. But anyways, those are just some of my main uh, attractants I keep in my, tack my little ice fishing tackle box. Right here I've got all my bobber's necessities, my bobber stops, and my bobber beads. I've actually got a couple small little bobbers in there, just in case, uh, you know, um, I, need, I need to hook one up real quick. And again, I'm trying to keep it all impact, all tight, so I know where everything is, and it's not all over the place. Uh, these two little uh, blue things you see right here are swivels. I always keep swivels um, in my tackle box, mostly because if I need to uh, do a drop shot rig or some kind of other different rig, I can just nip off the swivel part and use that barrel. Um, really great stuff, though. And again, I've got some bobbers here. Some simple bobbers, and what I'll do with these is I'll I'll drop my line down the water, and I'll just real quick attach this to my rod or the end of my line, and so that the line can go back and forth. Because of course, if I got a bite, I've got to reel it in without taking it off. And I just attach it to my line, and if I've got a bite, I can hear that little rattle. I know if there's a bite, especially if I'm farther away from my hook or my uh, bait that I've dropped down in a hole. So these are pretty much my main tackle, my tackle box, which I keep all my bait and tractants and, uh, you know, main fishing equipment, like my pliers and my cutters. Uh, next thing I want to show you is the line that I use. Um, the area that I fish is called Banana Lake. Um, it's a, a really nice local pond slash lake I fish at. It's not huge, but there's er there are some really deep points. It's uh, 25 to 20 foot deep, two deepest points in the lake. 
and uh, coming with a deep uh, spring-fed lake, there's trout, and this uh, lake is stocked with a rainbow trout, very large trout. If you've seen my um, uh, October trout fishing video, you know how big these trout are. Humongous, two-foot trout, and uh, there's a lot of them in here. Um, unfortunately, we only got to hook a hook a couple this year, though uh, we still still are looking for some through the ice. So in this case, I used a heavier line rather than two-pound test. I'm just too afraid to use two-pound test even with my drag set. Um, I just I try to keep it uh, a little bit more heavier. Heavier. I've got four-pound test Berkeley Vanish. This is pretty interesting. I'm not a big Berkeley line guy. I'm mostly Suffix and uh, Pro Line. I'm I don't really am not a big uh, Berkeley line. I'll even do Stren often, but I don't do Berkeley. And I found that I really like the Berkeley Vanish. Really great stuff. Um, Again, this stuff is four pound test, 110 yards uh, per spool, really cheap. I got this for about three dollars. And let's say you've got three poles you got to rig up. Well, that's only nine nine dollars, about ten dollars plus tax, and uh, that's a really good price. It's within my price range, and I can just get a lot uh, for this small amount of price. Berkeley Vanish is really nice. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a, a lower grade suffix in a way that it doesn't have that much memory to it. It doesn't bend, and it uh, it doesn't coil up as much as the regular line does. And I never ever fish on monofilament um, on my spin cast, but this time I decided I want to and I've really really am impressed with this. This stuff is really um, held on onto my spool and this stuff is really not coming off. Really great stuff as you can see. It does coil up a little bit, but really when you get in the water and you start using it, it'll get really uh, memory uh, resistant and it works really nice. Um, the rod I've got right here is just a regular uh, ice, or just a regular um, uh, freshwater rod. It's a uh, Shakespeare. I always go to Shakespeare when I'm looking for a cheaper, more inexpensive uh, reel. Sorry if I said rod, I meant reel. <laughs> um, but I always go for Shakespeare for a more inexpensive reel. Um, mostly because their stuff is good, I can trust it. This is a four ball bearing reel. Um, I believe it's the uh, Interpret, which is a really good series for Shakespeare. And I got this for about, I'd say $15. $15 reel right here I'm holding. And it's not even an ice reel, and it works just fine, perfectly, especially with this uh, Berkeley Vanish on here. Really great stuff. You can buy stuff not made for ice fishing and put it towards ice fishing. Like I said, I've got this spinnerbait box that isn't even a nice fishing tackle box, and I still use it. Um, and especially if you're not that really big into ice fishing, though you really like it and you really want to do it, you can just take this stuff out, the cheap stuff, and start using it. Again, this is a micro, micro reel, really small, mostly for pan fishing, crappie, and and perch, but I definitely suggest this. Um, they sell it at Cabela's and Dick's. I got this one at Dick's for about fifteen, twenty dollars. Really good price. Check out Shakespeare when you're looking for a couple of your ice fishing rods. So this is my episode today, just showing you what I use for ice fishing. Uh, again, thank you for the 100 subscribers. And again, if you click that little link on my one page, then you probably like ice fishing, like I said. But hope you guys stay tuned and keep on watching fishing in the Midwest.